Hey, here we are again out in the trailer. I'm um, going to talk about other ropes today. We're going to talk about static ropes and uh, double braids, which are jacketed 12 braid, uh, 12 strand hollow braid. We mentioned them in the last rope. Um, first, we'll get into working ropes. Typically, you have your static lines, um, which are max 5% stretch. Uh, there's a bunch of different EN standards. They're normally polyester ropes. Um, you use these for your work, for climbing, for positioning stuff. Um, yeah, three to five percent stretch, static line, no more than five percent to notes of static. Um, this is, of course, in a size that works with IDs, works with rigs, works with everything. So this is ten and a half and eleven millimeter. Um, when it comes to some more technical stuff, um, you can always get this, which is made for the military for repelling. Um, various manufacturers have various styles. This is a polyester rope, similar to the last static rope, only it has a Technora jacket, so it can handle abrasion and heat a lot more. Um, this works really well in all your devices. It's really, really good for the feel on it because of the Technora jacket and it's not polyester. It has a grip to it. Um, it works really well in devices and it has about 3% stretch. So they put it out in a variety of different styles, military repelling rope, police SWAT rope, and it's around 3% stretch. Um, it works good in all the devices. This is 11.5 mil. Um, it fits in all your Petzl devices. It fits in everything. And it's a really nice rope to work with because it's super, super abrasion resistant. I'm dragging it over things in the perms, dragging it over. It, it doesn't really care. Um, <clears throat> you can still cut the core with a hot knife. Um, the jacket, of course, you have to use a regular knife to get through the jacket. Um, so it does melt and it does seal the ends fairly well. Um, it is attached to the core so it does not um, slip, um, which is a problem we'll get into with the other ropes. A really nice compromise rope, good for repelling, um, good for, for pulling on if you can handle the small diameter, um, because I, I can't. It's 11 and a half or 12 mils, too small for my hands. They don't close tightly around this size. But it's a nice interim working rope um, to float stuff, to use for, for a variety of purposes. And knowing that it only has a limited amount of stretch makes it really useful so you don't waste a lot of energy when you're trying to go up or down or even pulling things up into the reds or into the perms. Um, if you've got, say, a, a ratcheting pulley up top and you're trying, because you can't get equipment in and you're trying to float truss up there, <clears throat> the energy you expend, it will work with this better than with a stretchier rope. So the less stretch, the better. Uh, those are two styles of rope that we keep. Um, they're general purpose working ropes. Um, then we get into the more specific positioning ropes, which we use once you've, yesterday we talked about perform a flying rope, and that's all six mil, generally six mil tech or tech Nora. Um, but you have to transition to something normally between your workstation and your head block um, that will fit in your clutches that will fit in your uh, friction devices like gold tails. Um, you know, you need your friction devices. So, because they generate so much friction, and because you want normally on a gold tail drop, you want positional accuracy, stretch is not your friend because things will tend to be plus or minus um, depending on the force and the stretch. So, it's not ideal. So, a long time ago, well, not so long ago, 10 years ago, people went to a Samson product called T100. And that's a polyester jacketed uh, hollow core 12 strand inner braid. So it's an inner braid in an outer braid. And the outer braid is polyester and the inner braid was Dyneema. And it was used a lot. Um, it uh, has zero stretch basically. Um, in the sizes you need for your clutches and things like that, 12 mil, 10 mil, it's like 12 mils, like eight, nine tons. So it's, it's a way and above strong enough. Um, it had a few issues. Uh, one of which is that 
with all of these ropes, this is not it, but the core and the jacket are independent. So what happens is you end up with a big fuzzy mess on the end because you end up having the jacket slip. And unless you milk it every time down, you will always end up with that mess from where you cut it. Um, so T100, T100 Samson ropes. Um, it's an imperial rope. So 12 mil T100 is a pain in the ass in a lot of devices. It won't work because it's uh, just that much too big. 11.5 works. Um, 12.4, which is half, half inch, doesn't work. It's just that little bit too big to get through devices. Um, whereas even 12 will work. Um, one big drawback of the T100 was it is a full polyester jacket, um, which is slippery and which also under heat glazes. So when using them in the aforementioned gold tails, if you do a lot of rapid runs on these, because it's a friction device running through these, it will glaze the jacket and it gets crunchy. And you can see it with fast runs, long runs, it'll build up a lot of heat and the jacket being polyester doesn't like that. So it starts to, to get glazed um, wh where it runs through the, the friction device or in the clutch, you'll see it, it'll start to get crunchy. And when you get finished with it, you'll, you'll feel it. it. It has a rough, crunchy feel to it. So it's not optimal. And as such, we started going to more uh, of a rope design for abrasion and a, a rope designed for the devices we use. And currently uh, I'm using a, it amounts to zero stretch, um, double braid that has a Technora jacket and a Dyneema SK99 core. This is a, in uh, 12 mil, this is a nine ton rope. Um, again, you have the issue of the core and the jacket being separate. It's not, uh, the, the strength of the rope's not jacket dependent. It's just a Zara's protection. So you end up having to milk it in one direction if you use it a lot or else you end up with a really ugly messy end on it um it's fairly it's fairly heat resistant even though it is dyneema in the core because you have this heavy jacket and this one is a 32 uh, a 32 strand jacket so it's extremely tight um you can splice it it is a real pain in the ass um as you notice here spliced small eye and that gets to one of the things that helps with this rope is if you splice one side and leave the other open, you can always milk from the eye down to the open end. And you won't have that problem. Um, this rope in particular is used, as you see this, the way it's done here, this particular rope, where's the other end, um, is used as a connection to the other flying rope. So this would go to a shackle, which your lines, your six mil lines are attached to from above and it has a thimble in it and it's fully spliced end. And uh, you can see how tight this is. The jacket is just brutal to work with. But in this case, it's going down around the pulleys into your devices, which would be a clutch or a gold tail and you have to feed it from one side and you never end up with a problem end. Um, this here, this 12 mil uh, runner twin is with SK99 is nine ton rope. Um, it works, it's designed, these are sailing ropes. They're designed specifically for clutches, winches, um, big things on big sailboats, on mega sailboats, racing boats. Um, they work well when wet because Dyneema doesn't absorb the water. The jacket may get a little wet, absorb a little bit because it's 50% Technora. But on the flip side, the inners never get wet, so it doesn't hold as much water. Um, it doesn't glaze because of the Technora running it through a friction device. You've already seen we tested clutches. Um, they start to slip at 1,100, 1,200 kilos. They're rated at 15. And that's predominantly because of the jacket. On a polyester jacket, they will completely slip on these 50% uh, tech jackets, you'll get up to 15. They'll slide a little bit in the ceramic jaws, which you have to use um, as because they're pulling the fuzz off the jacket, they start skiving the rope down. But they will give you your best grab in a clutch or your best use in a, a uh, gold tail.
or similar friction induced situation um, because the cover is specifically designed to resist abrasion and to give you added grip. Um, so this rope is positional accuracy is 100%. It also has all the drawbacks of a synthetic core 12 strand in that it uh, has it has zero forgiveness when it comes to the stretch factor. So everything is to the millimeter. You can't get it to stretch. So if you fall on this or you're using this as a stop, it has no stretch. There is no sweet spot. You'll see here you have a 12 strand hollow core center. And this is HM, H, M, HWMPE fiber, high weight polyester, high weight polyethylene basically plastic fibers and it's a 12-strand uh, hollow braid that's within a jacket that is 50% Technora on a 32-strand 50% polyester. Super high heat, super high abrasion resistance. This rope gives you incredible positional accuracy um, and it survives in all your devices without getting ruined. It is as strong as cable it is extremely friendly to the hands, um, and, and it is, like I said, for specific positional accuracy, it is a really good rope. And this has become the new standard that, I, well, I've used this for eight or ten years, but this has become and supplanted the fully polyester jacket. Now, in something like a gold tail, where you have X amount of friction, which depends on the rope size, I'm not going to undo the gates because I'm lazy right now. You're relying on the rope passing through the tail for your friction. Now, if for certain things, it's too much. Like if you've got a 50 kilo person, you're trying to, to gold tail down. Because of the, the abrasive jacket, because of the friction, heavy friction this jacket can, can generate, it's very slow in a gold tail. Now, if you're 100 kilo, it works great. But if you're half that, it's difficult. So what you do is you normally would get a smaller diameter. And this is a 10 millimeter of the same with a Technora jacket. Okay, and this is a different, this isn't runner, this is a, a Marlowe, which is called, and this, this rope actually has a very strange cover on it. It's called Tuaron, yet another magic fabric. And it's super high heat resistant. Um, and it's Technora and Tuaron. So you can hold a blowtorch on this stuff. It protects the inner dynamic core considerably. Um, it, it, it's incredible rope. But back to this, it's a double braid is what we call it. And because the diameter is smaller when threaded through the device for a lighter person, you end up with zero stretch, perfect positional accuracy, but it moves faster through the tail because of the diameter difference with all the changes of direction you're making through the holes. So these are things you need to think of when using a rope like this. It doesn't move like a static rope. Originally, these devices were all developed with static ropes in mind. Um, with these type of ropes, um, especially with the Technora jacket, which has a huge amount of grip and abrasion resistance, um, you need to think about having different sizes for the speed that they go through the tail um, and also your clutches and things like that. Clutches come in a variety of sizes uh, in two ranges and um, you know one for smaller ropes, one for larger ropes and you need to have one that fits your correct machinery and plus one thing you have to realize is when you use these with clutches in particular spin locks you need to get the ceramic jaws. Um, because the fabric is so abrasive, uh, it will basically, if it slips at all, it starts lathing a groove into your aluminum jaws. Anodized or not, it will tear them up. And the only recommended solution is to use the ceramic version, which incidentally doubles the price of a clutch. But such is, you know, what it takes to run this type of rope. Um, but it, it's incredibly heat resistant, incredibly friction generating, um, it does not ever glaze. Um, it, it is positional accuracy of 100%. And um, your preferred termination is always going to be a splice. This is a splice that's whipped. Uh, that took a lot of effort because it gets 
as hard as iron in the end. Um, but that way you can always have a length where the because the cover is not, is separate from the the uh, inner. That's the only way you can guarantee you won't have a really shitty end on it. Um, one of the secrets of this is, you know, everybody, I have my hot knives and I cut the polyester ropes. One of the tricks to doing this on the ends is um, you cut your rope and you can't melt it because it won't melt. Um, the Dyneema will melt, but the cover won't. So you cut it and you've bound it. And what you do is you fill it with super glue on the end and let it go off. Now you've basically bonded the jacket to the internals and you do that when you've milked the rope to its full length and you've taken all the slack out of both ends. So you can run an eye in one side and have an actually a glued and finished end on the other and you won't end up moving the cover around on the interior line. They won't move separately. They will stay this way and you won't end up with a really ugly, shitty end um, where it's all fuzzed out and it's a mess and you've all seen it on set which is typically what happened with the T100. And it would happen with this if it didn't have an eye on one side and after it was stretched and into tension, um, the other end was cut and uh, secured with about, I don't know, 20 millimeters of super glue, uh, a quick bit of tape, and then I heat shriek wrap it. And that's, that solves that problem. And you can make specific ropes like this for your operating and devices. Um, these are transitional ropes to use for the ratchets and other devices on the ground at your base station that terminate to your flying uh, area. This one, of course, is because of the strength of the rope, this one has a very large shackle on it, which is the correct size for this, or a very large thimble on it, which is the correct size for this rope. Um, and I use a shackle here always. I don't use a carabiner. Um, it's just with rope this strength, why would you bother? You know, carabiners at most, you know, three tons, some are five tons. Um, you can get a five ton shackle that's, you know, small and put it on there and it works quite well. So that's what we use now are these double braids and you can look at how to splice them. All these are very spliceable, but don't trust your splices until you've done a few and you've pull tested them. I splice them. Um, I have a pull tester. Um, they are a lot of work to do these types of ropes, these double braids, especially because it's a 32 strand core, a cover, um, and trying to get the rope so that you can end up with a splice that has a covered eye. There are two recommended ways to terminate this. One, you can leave the jacket off and then just have the loose core in the eye. So you would have this, which is perfectly acceptable, except it gets fuzzy and chafes. And to me, it just doesn't look right. So I do a core cover complete on a splice, which then means you have to pull, <laughs> you have to pull things out from the cover and get them to fit back in the cover to make a splice. There's plenty of splicing groups online, plenty of uh, directions. Gleistein has their directions for their ropes. This is a Gleistein rope. Samson has their ropes directions. But that's one guaranteed way to not have a problem with these non-bound -core, non -core, um, non core to jacket ropes. Uh, one is to always do one end and have uh, the other end cut and super glued and heat shrinked or to splice an eye into both ends and then it's always gonna be the same. The jacket never bumps, never binds, never slides. Everything stays completely covered and you, you're good to go. So those are two options. Um, one other thing I will say about these ropes, again, is with their strength, you can, with a double braid, you can tie knots in it. Um, so if you don't wanna do that, you could tie a knot. So say, even if you are generous, which with the lessening of strength, and this is a nine ton rope and you tie a really nice um, I don't like figure eights because I find them big and bulky. We tend to use uh, uh, another knot at that. But if you tie a knot in the end to attach to your upper connectors, you milk the rope back from there. And if it's a length, leave the knot in it. Make sure it's a nice, tight, dressed knot. And you can always milk back from that and seal the other end. You don't have to do this. And even if you rate it at 50% reduction of strength on the rope, you're still at a four and a half ton rope. Um, so 
These are things, you know, once you get into these levels of strength, you can get away with uh, these kind of things. These knot quite well. Um, because of the jacket, they grip in the knots. You don't have a lot of knot slippage. Um, when you pull a knot with this, um, you will watch it and it doesn't slip much um, to, as it sets. Um, in fact, I use this rope on the pull tester and I will clove hitch it and uh, it holds incredibly well. And it, it, with a clove hitch, it reaches its breaking strength at nine tons. Um, in fact, a little bit over um, without destroying itself by cutting through itself like other ropes will because of this Technora jacket. It's extremely resistant to doing that. Um, so you don't have a lot of the abrasion problems that you would normally have. And again, with the heat reduction from the, the jacket, the abrasion reduction, your Dyneema SK99 core is quite well protected. Again, zero stretch, super strong, probably the best rope to use for positional accuracy in your devices. So that's just a quick one on some ropes today, some static ropes. Um, and to touch with tomorrow, a lot of our work ropes, or to touch with yesterday, a lot of our work ropes, the static you'll use to put, to fly things into place and to guide them off. If I have time, I still will use wire for guy lines. Um, it keeps them away from being part of the operating rope. When you've got 50 ropes in the air and you're trying to decide what does what and what goes where, you can color coordinate them, you can tape identify them, but for guy wires that are gonna be holding a rig in space for any period of time, I will make dedicated uh, steel wire and crimp the connections and then either put tensioners, turnbuckles, things like that in them. Um, again, that's just a quick side note because we showed the static working ropes. Um, and then as a last note, we're gonna go to, uh, as I mentioned, rope pulling. And we're gonna talk about rope pulling. Um, my hands can't pull. This rope is zero stretch. It's fabulous, but I can't hold it. It's 12 millimeter. My hands don't close on it. So I use something called a cord lacé. It comes from the circus performance. And it is a 32 millimeter rope, which my hands can grip quite well. And I use these exclusively for hand pulls because they are more than strong enough. They are extremely friendly to your hands. The 32 millimeter, you can get a good grip on them. They're a cotton covered rope. They're designed to be gripped. And this is what we use for our pulling ropes. So just another thought on rope. Look at your hand, make a fist and see what's there. You can see that you can usually get a fingers within. Well, that's 12 millimeter. So it doesn't really help you to try to grip 12 millimeter. A lot of guys will hook a beaner and a span set to it and pull with a span set. It, it's just use something that works. Um, 32 millimeter works for my hand size. Yeah, they're color coded, red, whites, blacks, so that I know what rig they go to. And it makes for a very nice pulling situation because they're comfortable, they're easy to grip. Um, if you're on a ladder, they're great. Um, so that was just a last note on rope. Um, for pulling factors, I tend not to use the 12 millimeter ropes, um, even though they will transmit all the force. And they are strong enough just because they're uncomfortable to use. Um, so that's a discussion of other ropes today. And um, yeah, uh, we'll put this back where it belongs. And good luck to you. And uh, you just have to think about your rope choices for your workstations, for your climbing situations, uh, for your possible rescue scenarios, having static lines. And I didn't mention one thing, which was dynamic rope. I always keep a little bit around. I'm out of it currently. And I may use a bit here and there on various sudden stops, uh, like a dead man. I may put a small little loop of um, dynamic rope in there just because it does stretch and it's more than 5% and it helps. It's better than bungee because bungee usually stretches out and it looks too funky. But a dynamic rope helps because as you hit it, it gives a little, you still get knocked off your feet but it doesn't tend to pull you back like a cartoon, which is what bungee would tend to do it because you stretch it out and it will rebound. Um, and once you're weightless in the air, it's only pulling your weightless body in the air backwards. Um, so those are the ropes we use, uh, particularly the twin runner for drops and in the base stations. Um, we mentioned how to take care of it. 
You can wash it when you need to. Log all your ropes. Um, if you start cutting specific ropes, specific lengths for things and you have them, always log them, what you're using them for, how long you've kept them, when they went into service, etc. Um, that way you've got a good idea of what you have. And, um, you know, ropes come up for various scenarios. And this is, this is a good way to make sure you have your devices covered, two different diameters. And uh, good luck. Enjoy it. Bye now.